in continuation of what we have discussed previously, today we are going to determine the measures of central tendencies and measures of variability in group data. In the previous discussion that we had, all of the examples are in and group data. Now, to start with, we are going to determine the measures of central tendencies pertaining to the mean. The formula that we are going to have in the mean is we have the x bar is equal to the summation of f x all over n where the x bar is our mean the f is the frequency and our capital letter x is the class mark and our n is the total number of elements Now let's start to have an example. Using the frequency distribution below, find the mean. The data represents the number of miles run during one week for a sample of 20 runners. Now we have here the class. We have from 6 to 10, 11 to 15, 16 to 20, 21 to 25, 26 to 30, 31 to 35, and then we have 36 to 40 with the frequency. Now, in the class, it means to say that we have uh, 6 to 10 miles and the frequency is 1. So therefore, we could say that only one runner belongs or only one runner uh, obtained the 6 to 10 miles in that week. And then we have the 2 here. It means that there are two runners obtained the, uh, the distance of 11 to 15 miles and so on. Now, if we are going to add the frequency, all the frequency here is equal to 20. It means to say that our n here, the total number of elements, is 20. Now, what we are going to do next is we are going to get the class mark. Now, to get, to get the class mark, what we are going to do is we are going to add the upper and lower boundary divided by 2. So for the class mark, which is the capital letter X. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so the uh, lower, uh, not the boundary, lower limit and upper limit. So here, the upper and the lower limit is 6 and the upper limit is 10. So what we're going to do here is we are going to add the two numbers divided by 2. So here we have 6 plus 10 equals 16 divided by 2 is equal to 8. And then we have 11 plus 15 equals 26 divided by 2 is 13. And so on. So we have 18, 23, 28, 33, and 38. Now take note, if we go back to our formula, what we have here is the summation of fx. It means to say that we are, we are going to multiply first the f and the x. So for our fx, we are going to multiply. So we have the frequency multiplied by the class mark. Okay, and so on. Now take note, that if we have the summation symbol, which is the capital letter sigma, what we are going to have here is we are going to add all the numbers. So to add all the numbers, we are going to use the formula in the Excel, equal sign, sum, open parentheses, highlight all those numbers, and then uh, close parentheses, then equal sign, or enter rather. So for our mean, So the mean here is that we have 
the summation of fx divided by our n. So the answer is 24.5. In other words, the estimated mean of the 20 runners is 24.5 miles. So the answer for this data, this table is 24.5 miles. Okay, is the mean, uh, the estimated um, mean miles of the 20 runners. Okay, so let's proceed to the median. To determine the median, we are going to use the formula. Okay, this is x tilde. Okay, that's equal to, uh, we have the lower boundary of the uh, median class plus we have the n over 2 minus f all over okay the frequency of the median class multiplied by the class interval where We have the x tilde is the median. Our capital letter L is the lower boundary. Of the median class. Our n, of course, is the total number of elements. Up our capital letter F is the sum of all the frequencies below the median class. Okay. The F sub I is the frequency of the uh, median class. And of course, our i is our class width or the class interval. So this would be the formula and of course, their notation in the symbol. Now let's have an example. To determine the uh, median of the group data, let's have this example. Using the frequency below, find the median. The data represent the number of miles run during one week of the sample of 20 runners, which is also the example that we had in our mean. Now, to determine the median, first, we are going to set the boundaries of the class. Or class boundaries. Now, to determine the class boundaries, okay. okay. If you can, if you can see here, okay, between the class, there is a difference of one. So, so we have we have ten, and then eleven. So the difference between eleven and ten is one. Here is one. Here is one, and so on. What we are going to do here is we are going to subtract the lower limit by half of this uh, the difference of these numbers and then on the upper limit we are going to add the half of their difference so of course the difference between uh, 11 and 10 is 1 difference of 16 and 15 is 1 and so on so half of 1 is 0.5 
So we are going to subtract 6 by 0 0.5 and we are going to add uh, 10 by 0 0.5. So what we have here for our class boundaries, so we have 5.5 to 10.5. And then we have 10.5 to 15.5. Then we have 15.5 to uh, 20.5. Then we have 20.5 to uh, 25.5 and then we have 25.5 to 30.5 then we have uh, 30.5 to 35.5 and then we have 35.5 to 40.5 okay now we have now the class boundaries so the these numbers is what we call as the lower class boundary or the lower boundary. In some reference, that is the exact lower boundary. And of course, here we have the upper uh, class boundaries. Now, to determine the median class, because we have here in our formula, we have the lower boundary of the median class, then we have all the median class. To determine the median class, First, we are going to have the cumulative frequency, the CF. For the cumulative frequency, what we are going to have is we are just going to add it here gradually. So, which let's start with 1. Okay. And then 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. And then we have 3 plus 3 equals 6. Then 6 plus 5 equals 11. And then we have uh, 11 plus 4 equals 15. And then 15 plus 3 equals 18. And then 18 plus 2 equals 20. In this case, in the cumulative frequency, the highest number should equal to our n. Okay, now to determine the median class, we are going to divide our n by 2. So here, our n is 20. So our n is 20 divided by 2 is 10. Now, within the cumulative frequency, we are, just go we are going to determine which of these number is closer to 10 or uh, it should be greater than 10 but closer to 10. So here, the numbers greater than 10 is uh, 11 and 11 is closest to 10. So in other words, this is our median class. So I repeat, to, to determine our median class, we are going to divide it, we are going to divide n by 2. So 20 divided by 2 is 10. In our cumulative frequency, let's try to determine uh, numbers greater than 10 or numbers uh, equal or uh, equal or greater than 10. Okay, if there is no number uh, exactly equal to 10, we're going to locate number greater than 10 but closer to 10. So in this case, uh, we have 11. 11 is much closer to 10 as compared to all other numbers. So this would be our, uh, our median class. So here we have uh, n over 2 is equal to 10. Okay, now our lower boundary, okay, the lower boundary of the median class. So here we have 20.5, okay, 20.5, because this is our lower boundary. Okay, our N is 20, we have that one, our F, okay, our capital letter F is the sum of all the frequencies, okay, below the median class. Now, the, the below here is this portion because they are all lower numbers as compared to these numbers. Okay, so 6 plus 3 is equal to 9 plus 1, that's equal to 10. Okay, so the uh, Fi or the frequency of the median class, so we have the, the frequency is equal to 5. And of course, our I is our class interval. The class interval is we have to have this one. 
So here, we could have uh, 6 to 10. To have our interval, we are just going to uh, get the difference of the upper and lower limit plus 1. So we have 10 minus 6 is equal to 4 plus 1 is 5. So why 5? Because, or why, why we're going to add 1? Because 6 is included in the counting. So we have 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So the interval is 5. Now we have all the necessary information needed to get our median. Okay. What we have is we are just going to, okay, uh, the lower limit, uh, not the lower limit, the lower boundary, the exact lower boundary, okay, plus, okay, open parenthesis, we have 10, uh, upper, uh, we have the 10 minus the F divided by our FI, that's closed, and then multiplied by our 5. So in other words, the median okay, of this uh, distribution, frequency, frequency distribution is 20.5. So the median of the miles of the 20 runners is 25.5 miles. Okay. To determine the mode of the group data, we are going to use this formula. Okay. So we have x hat is equal to the exact lower boundary of the model class plus okay the frequency of the model class minus the frequency of the model class uh mod the frequency of uh the class prior to the model class over we have the frequency of the model class minus the frequency of the class prior to the model class plus the frequency of the model class minus the frequency of the class after the model class. And all of these will be multiplied by the class interval. So let's have where this one is what we call as the x hat is the mode. The L is the exact lower boundary of the model class. And then F sub M is the frequency, the frequency of the model class the F sub M minus one is the frequency okay before the model class of Frequency of the class before the model class. And then we have the uh, F sub M plus 1 is equal to the frequency, the frequency after the model class. This is after the model class. And then, of course, our i is our class interval. Okay, so to have, okay, to understand more about this formula, let's try to apply this one in an example. So here is our example. Okay, using the frequency distribution below, find the mode. The data represents the number of miles run during one week for a sample of 20 runners. As you can observe, this is the same example that we had in our other central uh, measures of central tendency.
if you can observe with our formula, most of the formula has this model class. Okay, so we are going to determine first the model class. To determine the model class, let's look for the frequency column. Okay, in the frequency column, let's try to determine which among the number has the, va the highest value. In this case, we have 5. So in other words, this row is our modal class. So this would be our basis for the in getting the other values of the uh, formula. So we can identify our uh, lower boundary. So for our lower boundary, okay, we have this one, 20.5. Then we have now our frequency of the model class. This now we could not have the uh, subscript here. So in our Excel, so we have FM. So the frequency of the model class is five. Now let's have the frequency before the model class, the F sub M minus one. So before the model class. So we have the three. So here we have the three. And then we have the frequency of the model class. Ah, frequency after the model class. So we have four. And then we also have our class interval. So for the class interval, we have five from six to ten. Since we already have now the information needed to satisfy that satisfy the condition of our formula, then we can now compute for the mode. In this case, we are going to use a formula. We have the lower boundary plus, we have the open parentheses, and then we have in our numerator, we have the, uh, the frequency of the model class. Uh, let's have one uh, parentheses. The frequency of the model class minus the frequency after uh, before the model class okay divided by okay we have the frequency of the model class minus the frequency of the frequency after the model class plus the frequency of the model class minus the frequency after the model class okay then we have one parenthesis and then another parenthesis times our uh, class interval and then equals. So as we can see here, we have 23.8333. Round off to the nearest hundreds place, we have 23.83. So we could also see that this 23.83 belongs to this model class. So in this case, we could est we could say that our estimated model class uh, really uh, is the correct one, the estimated one, because it belongs to the model class. So this would be our um, mode for the given problem. The range is equal to, we have the upper class boundary, let's say uh, U, uh, U upper class boundary minus the lowest class boundary so where r is the range okay, u c b is the upper class boundary and our l c b is the lowest class boundary let's have an example let's have this example using the frequency distribution below find the range the data represents the number of miles run during one week of uh, for a sample of 20 runners so in this case we are going to identify the ucb and the lcb for our ucb or the upper class boundary okay so the high the the highest in this case the highest is 40.5 okay and for our lower count uh, lowest class boundary lowest class boundary is the lowest one which is the 5.5 so 5.5 for our range okay 
to determine the range, then we could have the upper boundary, the upper class boundaries minus the lowest, so which is equal to 35. So the range within this uh, frequency distribution is 35 miles. Okay, so that's too easy, right? Okay, so let's proceed to the the standard deviation and the variance. To determine the variance and the uh, the standard deviation, we are going to use this formula. So for the variance, we have okay. This is sigma small letter sigma squared is equal to we have the formula the summation of f we have times x minus the mean quantity squared all over the summation of f minus 1. Now take note that if this is a sample, then we have f, f minus 1. Let me correct my formula. If uh, this one, okay, let me ch change this one. Okay, so if, if it is uh, population, then we're going to have the okay, capital letter N or the number, the, the, the total number of elements in the population. However, if it is a sample, then we are going to use this symbol. So we have, of course, same. This is squared, not question mark squared. So same, we have the summation of F times capital letter X minus the mean quantity squared over we have N minus 1. Okay, where... Okay, where, of course, this sigma squared is our uh, variance. Okay, our f, of course, is the is the frequency. Oops, sorry. the frequency our capital letter X is our class mark of course our X bar is our mean and then our N is the total number of the population Of course, if it is a sample, then our n would be the total number of elements. And of course, to calculate the standard deviation, okay, to calculate the standard deviation, we are just going to get the square root of our uh, summation of f. Oops, wrong. Capital letter X minus the mean quantity squared over. Okay. So we are just going to get the square root of this number. Okay, let's have an example. So let's have this example. Using the frequency distribution below, find the variance and the standard deviation. The data represent the number of miles run during one week for a sample of 20 runners. Now take note, in this problem, it is specified sample of 20 runners. So we are going to use the uh, formula for the sample. Okay, now we already calculated, as we can see here, this example is actually taken from the example in the far mean. So in other words, we are not going to calculate anymore the mean. Okay, so the mean is 24.5. Now, in this case, because 
in the formula, we have the class mark, okay, minus the mean. So here, we could have capital letter X minus, uh, we don't have the X bar in the Excel. Let's say X. But take note that this small letter X represents the mean. So what we are going to have here is that we have the class mark minus the mean, which is 24.5. Okay. And this one. Now take note, after this one, it is, okay, as you can see, squared. So here we have x, capital letter x, minus the mean, then uh, squared. It should be raised to 2. Okay, squared. So what we are going to do here is we are going to square this one. So to square it up, this number multiplied by that number multiplied to itself and then this one okay next we are going to because uh we have here f times the times this number so we have the f times the capital letter x minus the mean squared So to get that one, we have this number. Okay. Uh, okay. So let's follow the formula. The frequency times this number. Okay. And then this one. Now take note that according to the formula, we are going to get the sum. Okay. So we have the sum. The sum of these numbers. Okay, so we have uh, 1,305. Okay, so we can now have the, uh, the formula. So for the variance, take note that the variance is sample. Okay, because according to the problem, it is a sample. So we have this one divided by n minus 1. So the n is 20, therefore it should be 19. In other words, the variance is 68.68 uh, round off. Okay. Now, so this is the variance. For the standard deviation, for the SD, okay, what we are going to have is that we are just going to get the square root of the variance. So we have equal sign, square root, of these number and then enter so the standard deviation is 8.29 so we round it off to the nearest hundredth place so so the standard deviation is 8.29 miles of the 20 runners so i hope you get something with this discussion thank you